As game developers, we all know that consistency, organization, general programming knowledge, and things of that sort are so important. So today, we won't focus on the common developer skills, but instead we will turn our focus to the specific aspects of Godot that if we have a good understanding for, will provide such a benefit to the efficiency and overall development of our Godot projects. Now I won't hide anything from you today, so here's the video breakdown with the three most important concepts to understand along with a few extras at the end. I greatly recommend you to watch the entire video, but feel free to skip around if need be. Throughout the video I will explain why I find each concept so important and how I recommend to improve them. But subscribe to help out other aspiring game developers and let's begin. If you use Godot, you are making use of resources all the time. Like creating a tile set uses a pre-built Godot resource to store the data of the tiles. But you need to take the time to understand custom resources and learn how to implement them within your projects because let me tell you, they are wonderful. Resources are essentially data containers which store information in a modular way. Creating a custom resource allows you to create custom data containers which can store whatever you want them to store. This is especially useful to maintain organization and modularity as your scripts containing logic no longer have have to also store specific values, meaning you can reuse that code by just instancing a different resource containing different values. For example, if you'd like to create an enemy with three different variations, then instead of creating three different scenes all with different scripts, you can create a root scene and a resource template. The root scene will contain all the nodes and base logic of that enemy, but instead of storing values like texture, speed, damage, and so on within the main logic code, you can instead store those values within a resource, drop that resource in an export variable, and then access those values within the logic code. So if you have three variations of that resource, which store the appropriate values for the three different variations of your enemy, then instead of having to instance many different scenes, all with separate scripts into the world, you only have to instance one scene and interchange the resource variable to create your different variations of the enemy. Now, this is a very simple example, but hopefully you can see that if resources are used correctly, they can be an extremely powerful tool. I mean, you can use custom resources to create visual effects, character ability, stat containers, inventory based systems, and so much more. Almost anything you can think of can benefit from the use of resources. So take the time to learn them. Experiment, watch tutorials, read the good old docs on resources, which I'll leave a link to below. But most importantly, ask questions. So feel free to ask me any question that you may have below, but whatever you do, learn how to use and implement custom resources into your project. So the animation player. Yes, it can help you create effects and animations, but what if I told you that the animation player could also control variables, manage methods, keyframe about any value, and create full on game features? Well, I'm not making it up, the animation player here in Godot can actually do that. But why would doing all this within the animation player be beneficial? Well, it helps you control logic timing with the visuals of an animation. So instead of having a cobweb of signals and timers, most of the logic can be controlled right within the animation timeline with different keyframes. For example, call method allows you to run functions, and also within the timeline you can pretty much change any inspector property along with export variables. So for instance, at 0.2 seconds into your animation, you can change the sprite frame, call two methods, change the value of an exported variable, shift the color, apply a tilt, enable a collision, and literally whatever else you'd like to do. If all this seems kind of new to you, then I really, really recommend that you take a deep dive into the Godot animation player because knowing when to implement it for more than just visuals will really help your development so much. Trust me. Now, understanding state managers and how to implement them into different situations will prove to be so beneficial in so many different instances, from managing game states and UI to controlling player and non-player characters. There are two main state managers, state machines and behavior trees. State machines define separate character states and control the transitions between those states, usually based on user input, which makes this very good for player characters. Behavior trees, on the other hand, are a little bit more complex as they involve a flow between states based on in-game factors as opposed to user input. This makes behavior trees more useful for non-player characters that need to function without the use of a user input, like your enemies, for example. Now, why go out of your way to create a state manager? Well, the reason is kind of simple. As games get more complex, things get more difficult to manage, meaning it is important to have everything organized in an easy-to-process fashion for both your eyes and the engine. For example, let's say your player has 10 different states. Trying to manage the logic of 10 states in the same area is going to get confusing and also be pretty messy for performance. So a simple state machine will then simply encapsulate each state within its own node under a parent node and the parent node will then manage which state is currently active based on user input. 
The best way to learn and improve your skills with state managers or behavior trees is to simply just create them. Remember to start simple, maybe work with only three states, which may seem pointless, but as you begin to get more comfortable with smaller state machines, then spice it up. Then spice it up a bit more and then more until you understand how to implement state machines into every situation. Okay, I'll keep these short, but there's a few other features that I find pretty crucial to understanding and those are signals, classes, and node structure. Signals in Godot are pretty neat because they allow you to decouple objects. In development, tightly bounding two objects means that one object won't work without the other. For example, in a project where a player collects coins and then those coins are displayed on screen. If you tightly bound both the player and the coin display UI, let's say by a variable, then the player won't be able to collect coins without the UI being present and vice versa. But signals allow the player to emit a coin collected signal regardless of if UI is present or not meaning the player no longer relies on the UI to carry out its normal function of collecting a coin. So signals allow for a loosely bounding of two objects, meaning that both objects can focus independently of each other but are still related. And I also think that understanding both classes and node structure will help improve code readability, organization, performance, and so on. It is just overall important to project structure. So yeah, be sure to look into it. We all know that as a developer, things like consistency, organization, general programming, knowledge, artistic skills, and things of that sort are extremely important. So how can we improve those aspects of our game development skill set? Well, around six months ago, I came across Skillshare and it is by far the best online learning platform I have ever been a part of. I am currently taking a class by Simon on making pixel art in Acebrite as I work to improve my own pixel art skill set. I am so thankful to mention that Skillshare has decided to sponsor this video as it is a platform I can completely stand behind. I can easily recommend it to you because I have seen so much knowledge. I mean really, Skillshare is the largest online learning community to date. There are thousands of classes led by industry experts in practically every single industry you could ever name. So whether you're looking to organize, 3D model, audio production, or anything else, and I mean anything you can think of, then Skillshare probably has an expert who's created a top-notch class for you. Skillshare also has this really neat feature called Learning Pass, which are consecutive class collections completely covering a specific skill in a very organized manner. I mean really, you could probably go from never picking up a camera before to becoming a professional photographer. But overall, I've had a very good experience on Skillshare and I really, really, really recommend you to check it out. Here's the best part. The first 500 people to use my link in the description or pinned comment will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So at no cost to you, go join Skillshare and get started today. And trust me, you won't regret it. Throughout this video, we went over the importance of resources, state managers, animation players, and even briefly covered signals and classes. All of these features are truly so powerful and need to be utilized by anyone developing a Godot. Today we very very briefly touched the surface on everything, so I recommend you to go do a deeper dive into each feature and see how they can best help you. But thank you so much for watching and I do hope it was able to provide a bit of insight. If you have any questions then feel free to let me know in the comments, but be safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless and bye bye. Thank you.